And there she is, HMS Trincomalee. All this fighting uh, ship in the British Navy. I just pan, you know, just a little. You can get a good idea of the uh, mass. She's had one of the uh, front uh, mass Yaram has been knocked off, uh, well, or taken down, probably due to bad weather of the uh, last winter. I'm going to try and get round these docks uh, tonight because we've promised um, bad weather tomorrow and I don't want to spoil this chance. So if I get the filming done tonight, uh, we can always come back tomorrow if it's a nice sunny day, hopefully, and uh, get some more footage. So we'll uh, do my best to get round and show just how, well, you see, hopefully, um, it is for a disabled person to get round the uh, dockside uh, and around the Trincomalee. So we're looking down the dockside now, the Trincomalee. Only on one side here. And uh, this is basically the in entrance where we came in. into supplies and uh, instruments. Oh, bit of a bumpy ride in. Just can't have the... I know I'll run the camera and go. Turn the reverse up a little bit and get the turn around. Yeah, just to look at that, that's uh, printing presses and documents. Right, I'm going to have to try and do this by hand, so this may be difficult. You'll have to just bear with me. So, ah, trying to get my wheel out the way. Some poor old girl there, I'm going to have a bit of a lie down. Don't know what that's about. Some, uh, oh, I'm looking through some papers down on the floor there. I'll try and get the chair around without uh, causing too much problem. As you can see, the railings are causing the view. A little bit of a trouble. We don't like these things getting our way. We just cope with them. I'll try to not just pan down on the floor and see what's in the box. Mm. Telescopes, some swords, and some, some pieces. Mm. The child there uh, dressed up as a, well, he thinks he's a plead nap.
Oh, well, I've got uh, a bit of a issue with his foot. And that's obviously the surgeon giving him some uh, medication or something. Okay. These young gentlemen of society. That gunsmith's been waiting on these two fops for over an hour, poor soul. And by the looks of him, he's not finished yet. That young gentleman in the uniform is Henry Seymour, son of the great admiral. And over there is his close friend, Francis Potter. Henry's just passed the examination for lieutenant in His Majesty's Navy. Oh, it sounds, he was a stupid midshipman. Uh, but I suppose his father's influence pulled him through. So now, in preparation for his, his glorious battles against old Boney, he's here to buy himself a fancy pair of pistols. No doubt he'll be wanting to impress his new shipmates. <laughs> Aye, and the ladies too, I'll wager. Just look at the way he's holding that pistol. A shilling says he doesn't know how to use it properly, if at all. The pair of them look like a right couple of dandy prats. Proper little socialites they are. Uh, more money than sense, if you know what I mean. The whole houses and soaks round here will be missing one of their best customers now that Henry's back off to sea. Uh, and Francis will be looking for a new playmate in the gambling halls. Damn me now, but I think he's managed to find the most expensive pistols in the shop. You know the ones. They come in a fancy box with your name on and have all the tools for cleaning and repairing. Not to mention the spare flints, powder and shot that comes with them. I, I wish I could afford to throw money away like that. These pistols would have cost him a fortune. Mind you, it's a big commitment for the Navy as well. 
It takes skilled shipwrights thousands of hours' work to build a ship like that, so you, you can't blame them for being cautious. I just wish they'd make their minds up. Do they want a navy stuck in the No, I just want to butt in there. You see the, uh, the, the uh, little half ships that are on the wall? These are called plugs, and uh, this is all that a shipbuilder had to go on in his day, was to take measurements of the model, the half model, and these were often given to the wives of uh, merchant uh, ship owners as uh, presents uh, once the ship was made and uh, commissioned or whatever, and then the plug was given to the they wipe off the, the owner, and they were mounted on the wall. Pen pusher now that a fighting man. His secretary looks like he spent most of his life ashore as well. Not exactly a hot of all sort. Most likely his father's a friend of the admiral or something. <laughs> God help him if he sees active service. Looks like he couldn't tell a pound less than what you know there was. Let alone the decent hire at the same if he saw one.
booking to later about because uh, they had a torrential storm last night and uh, the uh, lower deck here got absolutely drenched. Quarters. Probably one of these uh give me some by the uh side of the ship. Toilets. Get a gaze right the way through the ship. It's very substantial the length of it. Dehumidifiers going. Thank you. 
Can you lads give me a bit of information? When she was when she was last in service. When she was last in service. Because they kept her for a long time with the bridge. Yeah. Didn't they? Did he was her a trainer or something? They did. She she basically um, when she was built, she came back over here and went straight into reserve. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't used, went straight in. Yeah. Um, 20 year with the roof over, just sitting alongside the wall. Right. Then she did about five to seven year, then went back into uh, reserve again. Yep. Then came out round. Do you mind if I yet put you on video? No, 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 no. Oh, brilliant. Well, I've not got you. Like, <laughs> no, like like I've got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically she came back out again yeah. and she did a second commission round about the time of Crimea. Right. Uh, but again, she was never used in any, any battles or anything. No. She was mainly dispatch running, doing a little bit of cartography work, that sort of thing. At the end of that period, she was no longer required. We were into your steamships, your battle steamers, this sort of thing. Um, the likes of the Warrior, the big metal battle yeah. clad thing was up and running, so she wasn't required. So what they did was, they stripped her down, their masts, etc, and they towed her around the country to ports where there was naval reserve units. Yeah. And once she were there, That's a bit about it was left there, and the naval reserve unit had it for so long. She yeah. was here for three years doing that, and she was used for training purposes. Yeah, yeah. So, just where you are there, you can see the start of uh, like an arc. Just in the Oh deck. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cor it carries on behind you, big arc way. Same over there. There's, so there was three of those down the deck either yeah. side. And what they were were a bigger gun. So they were using oh, it for right. gunnery training. Ah oh, right. So it was a bigger gun and that was like a um, like a tooth track, brass tooth track. Yeah. And you, the gun was on a carriage and you could wind the handle and it would go around and yeah. come back again. So it was used for stuff like that. Ah. Um, also used for, uh, to a certain extent, training lads up for Merchant or Royal Navy, doing, um, I don't know, navigation, gunnery training, signals training. She was used for that. At the end of that period of time, when she was no longer any use for that, she ended up as a Second World War. She was a depot ship down off Portsmouth. There was her right. and, I can't remember the name of the other bugger, one of the old French ships of the line. They were tied up together and they were depot ships down ah. there. Hello again. I like that down. You like it down there, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> you don't like it down there. Scary. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, scary. Scary. No, oh, there's nothing to be scared of. Whoop, careful. So yeah, there were depot ships down there right. in the Second World War. At the end of that, what happened then was a chap called Weekly Cobb, who used to have Fort Royant, which was one of Nelson's um, old ships when he was a captain. Yeah. He was a flag captain, so the Fort Royant was a, a frigate, same as this. So he had that, and he was using it for sail training. Now it was wrecked in a gale off Blackpool. So he was looking for something to replace it. This was more or less done. They would have just ruined her basically. She'd have just been a wreck. They'd have pulled her apart. So this was offered to him. So he bought it and he took it on again as a training ship. Ah. But run more civilian. He yep. was still doing, he couldn't do sail training with them, but he could bring people on board, get used to what it was like at sea, etc. Yeah, sort yeah. Of thing. <laughs> And then at the end of that, what they found was it was no good for that anymore. So it was ended up down on the Tamar, down the port up again, uh, anchored up out there, and it was used more or less as a, an adventure training camp. All right. So schools would go down and they'd go yeah. on board for right. two weeks at a time. Yeah. And around the ship, they'd go off in the dinghies, do dinghy sailing, etc. They would again learn about seamanship, learn knots. They'd live on board, sleep in hammocks, and basically as if you were a sailor on board the ship. And they'd do that for two weeks at a time. Right. And then at the end of that period, 
it basically became a home. It yeah. wasn't required. Were you talking late 70s? Yeah. Somewhere around Because we've got your original figurehead, haven't we? Haven't we? The original, I'm not sure. Ah, it sounds, like, it sounds like Siemens Mission. I'm not exactly yeah, where it is. <laughs> there is one here. Yeah. The one that was on this when she came in ah. is fastened up on the staircase in the visitors' centre. Yeah. Now that was sent away for all paint samples, etc. The one that's on now was a replacement. Pretty much yeah. what they wanted. As long as it was dark blue with white breeches, no one seemed to mind. But now everybody looks the same. Even the lads on deck are starting to dress the same way. Well, I, I don't mind myself. A, a ship looks tighter if the crew are well turned out, and, and you can tell the officers apart easier as well. Mind in my day, once we were out of sight of land or other ships, we, we'd stow away our good uniforms and, and wear ordinary clothes again, if the captain allowed us. You see, by wearing our shore clothes, we made sure our dress uniforms didn't wear out. This lad's uniform must be a present from his father for getting a promotion. Most officers can't afford to get their uniform fitted. We bought ours ready-made off the shelf. Yes, I thought so. He's no ordinary customer. They must be wanting a complete outfit, dress uniform and all the trimmings. Would you just look at the smile on that tailor's face? Mind, I'm surprised he hasn't been pressed into service, living so close to the docks. There's a shortage of good tailors in the Navy these days. He must have some influential customers, if you ask me. Uh, looks like the sort of place I used to frequent. Mm. It's a pie now. Right, here's a picture of Valley Pool. Oh, sorry. Uh, Hartlepool uh, docks. It goes on a little bit further up. The marina's just around the corner there. But I'll just give you. Uh, in fact, you can see the marina is actually just behind the other side of that dock wall there. And if I pan round now, you can start to see some of the buildings around there. Pre <laughs> Premier Lodge. Uh, I wondered when I was looking at uh, accommodation actually. I looked at Premier Lodge and I wondered why. It was £122. Well, that explains it, its, its, its position. This is an old steamboat. Uh, no longer in use now. It used to be a cafe years ago. But uh, no, I don't think any longer you'll be going aboard that one. Um, yeah, what I'm. This one, oh, by the way, I must tell you this. Uh, this dock here is. Uh, Exactly the same as Bristol. Um, it's what's referred to as a dry dock. Uh, it has, uh, you can just about see them actually, probably not so much on the uh, video, but there is lock gates. So no matter what the tide's doing outside, uh, the gates keep the uh, level of water inside the uh, harbour. Oh, uh, it's referred to you as the quayside. So you can see there's a lot of new homes being built over there. And over here there's also quite a substantial now um, um, retail, retail park, whatever they call it. Yeah, your Morrisons and your uh, Asdas and all the rest of them, they're all, uh, they're all here now. What beats me is, you know, that uh, just next door to it, you've got uh, Middlesbrough, and the other side of Middlesbrough, you've got Stockton. Again, a massive uh, regeneration of the uh, the town, Stockton. What happened to poor old Middlesbrough? What happened to the money? 
Uh, this is Hartley Pool and this was all run down many, many years ago. And look at the result now, you know, an affluent uh, quayside and uh, there's another sailing ship over there, you can see in the distance, Trinket Malay here, plenty of money knocking about, uh, the marina there, plenty of yachts, uh, lots of yachts across there. You know, why didn't Middlesbrough benefit? But anyway, I'll leave you a lot to think about that one. Tonight we're wild camping, by the way, somewhere between here and Peterlee. Oh. So there she be, the trunk of Malay. Now that is well worth a visit for anybody. Unfortunately, we didn't get to, to the other decks, we just got on the gun deck. Uh, due to a seriously heavy rain last night, uh, there's a problem with the lift. But there is a lift there, so presumably it is all accessible. All the bits I went, wanted to go to were accessible, and the only reason we couldn't get to the uh, to the upper and lower decks was simply because of no lift to get us there. But well worth a day out. Well worth a day out. And you get a ticket that lasts you for a whole year, so you can come as many times as you want. So there you have the trunk of the fully accessible to uh, wheelchairs, buggies, there you go.